Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Space Science with Python. Today we will have a small mixture of a new tooling and Python and it's a rather short video today to show you a little bit how to obtain data from a particular source, namely the SBDB from NASA JPL. So the small body database I already introduced or showed it to you last time with the covariance metrics, the orbital elements and so on of the object series in 2021 WP. You may remember the small near-Earth object that just passed our planet at a distance of 0.4 lunar distances. Now, of course, one could simply copy-paste all the values from the browser or we could yeah, download an entire database or use a REST API to get the data of interest. And today I would like to show you this query API that was introduced by the JPL in August this year. There's also another um, API that's a little bit older from 2018 and provides also more data, covariance matrices and so on. Here it's a rather simple uh, query language that helps us to simply download some near-earth object classes, uh, commentary data and so on. So let's have a quick look. Um, the documentation um, is provided in the Python code I uploaded on GitHub and its uh, link is in the description, but I also added the corresponding links to the YouTube video description. So what you see is that you basically have one um, yeah, API link and where you can add a lot of query parameters for example, the so-called field data, where you can um, where you can define the object parameter, for example. So let's scroll down a little bit. So you can uh, define it, for example, whether it should be a NEO or a potential hazardous asteroid, whether it should um, whether it should also return the eccentricity, the inclination. Um, some other parameters like the like the so-called tisserand parameter. We will get to this in a future video, um, maybe in two or three weeks, or also the um, orbital elements corresponding errors. Yeah, here you see the one sigma uncertainty. But remember, the one sigma uncertainty is not um, useful to compute a possible solution space of trajectories because we need the covariance matrix, and the covariance matrix is not provided by this API but by another API from JPL that we will take a look probably on next Wednesday. So we can use the Wednesdays a little bit for short videos of to show and introduce uh, data sources, APIs and so on. Now, um, instead of scrolling through tons of parameters, it's a little bit up to you to go a little bit through it. Um, we have also some kind of filtering in the query language where we can filter for Again, whether it should be a NEO or not, whether it should be a, be a comet or an asteroid. And here are certain or the available orbit class names that are available. For example, Atira, which is then the IEO, are asteroids that are within the um, Earth's orbit. So they are not crossing Earth's orbit and they are yeah, approaching the Sun quite closely. Aten, Apollo, Amor, these are names. We will get familiar with it in the future, actually. Near-Earth objects were also um, a subject of my bachelor thesis, so I can talk a lot about these this kind of stuff. Mars crossing asteroids or other um, yeah yeah like uh, comets of certain types, so-called Enki type comets, Jupiter family comets, and so on. But all these things and the science behind it will be covered in the future. The only thing that I have to admit did not work quite well and maybe one of uh, of you viewers can help me a little bit is the um, filtering constraints. So there is some definition to, uh, for constraints to for example uh, limit the uh, inclination or the um, semi-major axis diameter and so on and it showed here as a JSON object that can be then yeah provided and which can be then yeah for example Encode it and then add it to the to the um, to the API string, but somehow it didn't work for me. So I didn't got any response from the uh, server. So I didn't got any data that considered the filtering. 
I still got the same results or sometimes nothing at all. So here, this is something I cannot show you 100%. Mm, there are also, again, other API, um, REST APIs that uh, work, but here I somehow was not able to get it running, so any help here is appreciated. Now let's move to our small notebook. Um, and for today's session, we will simply use pandas and we will use the package requests. And requests will be used to um, call the API. Now, first of all, we, yeah, we want to get a response from a server and we will use it with the package requests where we make a simple get command. Um, the command was... Uh, uh, not suggested, provided, or or shown by the um, REST API documentation. So we have here our REST API um, link, and now we need to provide some parameters. Let's call it params, and we want to give it some request dictionary. So the request dictionary, of course, needs to be defined. What do we want to do? So request dictionary equals for example, we would like to, uh, first of all, we want to have some fields where we want to have the full name of an object. We want the epoch of the object. We want the eccentricity, semi major axis. Uh, I should maybe semi major axis, the perihelion, so the closest distance to the sun of an orbit. The inclination with respect to the um, to the ecliptic plane, and of course our two other parameters like the um, uh, ascending node and the peri argument of perihelion. Now we can also no, let's make a line break and add another um, another field like for example. We would like to have only a certain class of objects, so all these parameters are provided in the, in the documentation. So, for example, this would be the inner Earth objects, but let's say we want to work with the cometary data. This is also something we will take a look soon. Please be aware that we know a lot of asteroids, for example, so not comets, but asteroids, like hundreds of thousands. So if you just say, I want to have all asteroids, probably you won't get all answers from the um, server because this exceeds probably some kind of limit. So be aware and make a cross check whether you get all results or not. Now, this, is, this will be our response and we want, of course, to get uh, the data of the response. And in our case, it will be a JSON object. So JSON response, let's call it. And it's simply the response.json. Response.json. So let's get it running. 1.5 seconds. That's kind of fast. And we can yeah, maybe take a look how uh, how it looks like so we will probably get some um, some 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 huge list of comments I think we know something like 500 comments or so um, you can use the print command but it will just return you some chaos here so I prefer to use or just write down the object name JSON resp here in our case and it will be probably formatted by our notebook so you see this looks a little bit more suitable. We have some kind of signature with our source from the small body database, query API version 1.0, published in August this year. We have our fields that we just defined, and here with the data, it starts with the first object, Ikaya Zhang, with the epoch, the eccentricity, quite eccentric object, huge semi major axis, and so on. Then the next object, then the next object, and so on. So, yeah, I can click more to get a view. But here, the very last entry is important, the number of counts. We have 651 um, known comets. Now we can easily adapt our, um, our query. Uh, let's take a look at the filter because I forgot it. For example, this one here, sb minus x frag, which says um, it ex excludes all comet fragments, if any, from results. 
So what are comet fragments? For example, um, a few decades ago, the comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 um, was on a collision, collision course with Jupiter, but the comet didn't survive as one piece, but fragmented into several pieces. So this is like something where we knew the original object and then we saw how it fragmented into several pieces and it entered uh, Jupiter's atmosphere. So this is a little bit um, strangely defined because we want to, e it says exclude all comets. Okay, so if you want to exclude, we have to set the value to true. So x frag is true. I don't know, I find it somehow contraintuitive, but... Maybe it's just me. And let's say it's uh, true or simply one. Now we can run it again. Um, we had 500, nay, so 650 in one um, comets. And now we should maybe have, I don't know, 50 less. Ah, or even, even less, 635. So around uh, 16 uh, entries in this JSON file were cometary fragments. Now let's get rid of this again. So and then run all. Hopefully the JPL server will not kick me out for spamming. All right. So what kind of uh, keys do we have? It's a um, no. It's a quite simple um, JSON object or dictionary. We have here now, so uh, we can take a look at the keys. Um, the keys are simply the signature, the field, so what we define, the data, and also the count. So yeah, we can simply kind of show the counts here, we don't have to print it, we can then use it, I don't know, for some if statement here, 651. Now we can, to work a little bit, yeah, to work with the data, we can or should use pandas, um, we can create something like, I call it a com objects or let's say comets df. Um, okay, it's not, it's not true, comets df if I'm changing the first line from comets to uh, neos. Let's say object or objects df. On objects df is then simply pandas data frame dot from dictionary, and then you see JSON response file or object. We take the data, but data alone does not provide the uh, columns. So we have to say also objects df dot columns equals to json resp and the fields that we defined. So let's get it running. And we can also print our new newly defined pandas data frame. And there we are. We have now a pandas data frame with 651 rows and eight columns. And now we can filter around as we like. So we can create histograms with the distribution of, of the inclination or do some signs. We can compute the so-called tisserand parameter that is um, related to the to some, let's call it, astrodynamical interaction between an, an, a comet and, and Jupiter. But again, this is something for a future video. But now you are able to create your own small data sets to play around. And now you see also here orbital elements, so values that you already know, something you learned in, in the previous videos, and you are good to go to uh, create your own database, maybe with SQLite or so. I mean, this is a very small data, database, so a uh, data set, so you can simply use SQLite for this or even uh, yeah, don't or save it as a JSON again, as you like. But yeah, this was basically it for today's video. A short one that just show should show you how to um, yeah how to how to obtain these data from the uh, query language. Ah, maybe one last thing because sometimes I get um, the the messages, especially on Reddit, um, while I'm doing this very low level stuff and not working with high level APIs. I know there are high level APIs. Yes, I use high level APIs as well. I think for starters, it's a little bit easier to um, to really work on the basis on the fundament to, to 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 see what's understand what's going on but this rest api and also other apis they are um, stored in something which is called astro query so astro query is a uh, part of the astro pi project 
and they introduce or edit also this um, solar um, small body database system and they build around a small API Python API so you don't have to write your own request like we did it now in our video you can simply call the astro query um, stuff and then you get the corresponding results I do not think they have also do they have filtering here I'm not sure I didn't use it or didn't test it yet with filtering um, but this would be something to to test um, if you for example I will also provide the link in the description and if you for example go to the um, uh, to the to the corresponding github page if I find it quickly as to query on github then you will also see that they have uh, embedded or added a lot of query languages on common APIs um, not only the um, where is it? Uh, I'm a little bit lost. This can't be SV. Okay, uh, let me search quickly. Um, what was it? SB, DB, JPL, SBDB. Yep, it's there. Um, uh, but they have also added others, like for example, Minor Planet Sampler. Simbat is also a huge one. Um, we have also uh, some ESO, ESA and ESO uh, um, APIs. There is ESO, also ESA Sky. So a lot of APIs are out there. We will get in touch with them by the time. But uh, yeah, that should be for it today. And I will also add the link to the description of the GitHub repository in my video, um, YouTube video description. Yep, that's for all. That's all for today. Next time we will dive a little bit deeper into the topic of comets. And until then, take care and see you next time.